Samson happened to be the only child and he was kind of spoiled. Let's not go to that bit today because what we want to find out is the activities of the power of God in our daily lives. Because sometimes we think that, well, if I need the Holy Spirit, then it must be that I have to become a deacon, for instance. Yeah, I will only need the Holy Spirit if I want to become a Sunday school teacher. And then, of course, I will need the Holy Spirit if I want to become a pastor. And there are these people that just say, oh, you don't need the Holy Spirit to become a pastor. You just go to Bible college. And there are people who just, oh, it's just only to preach. To preach. But you see, at whatever level, you need this power. If not, you are not going to enjoy it. And it will soon be filled with crisis, frustrations and regrets. Apart from that, to have a good family, you need to be enabled. If you are a Christian, you need divine enablement in your academics. Even in going to shop. I've seen these things play out. And I've enjoyed God at work. Praise the Lord. Let's read from verse 5. Judges chapter 14 from verse 5. Then went Samson down and his father and his mother to Timnath and came to the vine yards of Timnath and behold, a young lion roared against him. And the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. And he read him as he would have read a kid and had nothing in his hand, but told not his father or mother what he had done. Praise the Lord. When he talks about the young lion, that is to tell you a lion that is active. A lion that is strong. And it was just like he went there to, to ease himself. And then that lion roared at him. He, the spirit of the Lord came upon him mightily. And he ran the lion. He killed the lion and tore him apart. There were only two things that were going to happen anyway. Either the lion killed him or he killed the lion. And after doing it, it was just like, what has happened? Nothing. That doesn't usually happen with lions. You see, this year, 2020, and this decade, 2020, lions are going to roar at people. You want to go to the shop to just buy milk, and then you get there, and something starts happening. And different things, different activities. What will happen to save you? The Spirit of God will manifest at that time mightily. 
And then you will deal with the situation and walk away. Do you get it? Maybe you went with somebody else who, while you are entering this particular shop, you say, okay, let me just uh, get something uh, over there. And the person comes and we are just going and walking away and uh, maybe people start talking about wanting or the other. And the person will just look at you. What happened? So they just laugh and say, praise God. Amen? So you need the divine enablement. You don't have to pray for this trouble to come. You know, there's this childishness. People who just want trouble so that they will now have to prove that they, they are the power of God. It's childishness. Let's go a bit more. When we get a bit further in this scripture, let's see verse 19. Okay, I'll take it from verse 18. And the men of the city said unto him on the seventh day before the sun went down, what is sweeter than honey and what is stronger than a lion? And he said unto them, if he had not plowed with my heifer, he had not found out my riddle. And the spirit of the Lord came upon him and he went down to Ashkelon and slew 30 men of them, and took their spoil, and gave the change of garments unto them which expanded the riddle. And his anger was kindled, and he went up to his father's house. That was something again in his natural life. When he went out to go and marry, you know, they just play these jokes here and there. And he used that incident he had to give them a riddle. A puzzle for them to, to to solve it, and he came with a prize. Whoever won will give the other person something. They manipulated <coughs> Samson's wife and got the answer to the riddle. But the scripture says that the spirit of God came upon him. He doesn't have the wherewithal to fulfill the conditions of that riddle because he felt they were never going to find out. Remember, he didn't tell anybody. He didn't tell his wife, uh, his mother. He didn't tell his father. It was only him that knew what happened. And these people manipulated the whole situation and he now came at a disadvantage. In this year, you may have occasion to be at a disadvantage, to be at the receiving end, to be at a point where you don't know what to do. It might not be because you invited trouble. It's just a normal life that you are living. You are just living being yourself. You know, sometimes people feel that when we become uh, uh, Christians, then a whole lot of, yes, a whole lot of things have to change, but we're still who we are. If you are a quiet person, you are still a quiet person. If you are an extrovert, you are still an extrovert. How be it? You are doing it in God's way. You work in an office, you school somewhere, you do your business. And issues might come out. And at that point, you might just not know what to do. But because you are a child of God, and because God loves you, and because God wants to help you, at that time, you need the, the power of God. And at that time, there will be a divine visitation. The Spirit of God will come upon you. 
What I'm trying to say is that you need him every day and everywhere. You are not just a child of God in church. You are not just a child of God when you are preaching. You are not just a people of God when you are gathering. 